हेलो एवरीवन सो इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद अवर कैंसर सीरीज नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट ऑफन कंफ्यूज मेडिकल स्टूडेंट्स एंड नर्सिंग स्टूडेंट्स व्हेन आई विल टेक इट्स नेम एवरी विल एवरी वन विल गेट लिटिल बिट टेजी or confused in his mind that yeah this is the topic that we never got cleared so today we are going to kill it we are going to finish this topic in one lecture and i promise that it will be clear for you life long in terms of nclex rn exam in terms of we can say nursing officer exam norset exam and any bsc nursing student medical msc student that is our topic hodgkins lymphoma which is named after dr thomas hodgkin in the year 1830 to dr thomas hodgkin hodgkin was a doctor and this disease is named after him so this disease comes under we can say proliferative lymphoma proliferative lymphoma which which means that it is a proliferative disorder of t cell and b cell T cell and B cell, along with natural killer cell, which are also known as plasma cells, or we can say this is the disorder of B cell, T cell, and K cells. As we know that whenever pluripotent stem cell, pluripotent stem cell divide, they make two type of cells. first is we can say our that is lymphoid stem cell lymphoid stem cell include t cell b cell and k cells and myeloid stem cell myeloid stem cell which include rbc yes please wbc and platelet so uh, uh, under the wbc accept lymphocytes accept lymphocytes so now we are clear that it is we can say proliferative lymphoma disorder category that is hodgkins disorder hodgkins lymphoma and the doctor hodgkin mr hodgkin was a very clever doctor you know what he did he was so clever that when we discuss about the our uh, we can say differentiation so first is hodgkins lymphoma and on the other part is non hodgkin lymphoma all right he was so clever that he named the cells t cell and b cell responsible for causing that is lymphoma or cancer near the body parts for example that uh, these cells are easily predictable first of all the easily predictable cells he named these cells after him because he was very uh, we can say he easily predicted these cells to cause lymphadenopathy in the supraclavicular region and lymph nodes of the breast and in the axillary lymph nodes so he easily predicted and named these cells after him that i am putting stamp on this cells after my name dr hodgkins and all other cells all other cells which were not predictable but still causing lymphoma he named these as non hodgkin lymphoma he was so clever you know cleverness is a good thing Uh, non hodgkin lymphoma unpredictable unpredictable second feature of hodgkin lymphoma is that these are accessible these are accessible you can easily access uh, these kind of lymphomas or cancers easily just by feeling or auscultation or by percussion etc by simple methods accessible in the superficial lymph nodes we can say um, there is a, uh, we can say lymph node swelling can be there in the supraclavicular and uh, we can say clavicular no lymph nodes so these can be felt accessible these are present in deep tissues so he cleverly named these non uh, hodgkin because he was not able to access these and these are still present in uh, deep tissue like gi disorders small intestine large intestine then these as these are predictable 
as these lymphomas are predictable hodgkin lymphoma he, these can be predicted in stage 1 and stage 2 stage 1 and stage 2 as these are unpredictable they can be only uh, we can say assessed in the stage 4 in the stage 4 all right and these are systematic these are systematic spreading lymphoma Syst systematic spreading lymphoma but they are jumping type they are jumping type they show jump category systemic uh, we can say spread can be like this for example there is a lymph node another lymph node another lymph node so this is spread in a sequence systematic manner but in case of non-Hodgkin lymphoma the disease jump metastasis it start in the clavicular region and occurs in reaches up to abdominal regions directly all right and another uh, we can say uh, features include presence of these symptoms like fever in the Hodgkin lymphoma chills night sweat uh, is not there night sweat okay night sweating night sweating but these features are not present in non hodgkin lymphoma everybody clear till now in the lecture in this video lecture i am covering hodgkin's lymphoma which is proliferative lymphoma of b cell t cell nk cell named after sir doctor that is Thomas Hodgkin and this is the difference between the Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So what is the basic we can say WBC count it is basically 4000 to 11,000 millimeters per cube. All right. So it is excessive proliferation of these cells and these cells are studied or divided into uh, types types of Hodgkin lymphoma can be divided according to well differentiated cells well differentiated cells you know well differentiated cells we can say undifferentiated cells undifferentiated cells can be there clear cut visibility can be there of b cell and t cell undifferentiated cells can be there and there can be poor differentiated poorly differentiated cells can be there so the type are divided according to this category and we also know that till now that our hodgkin lymphoma can spread it through yes please it spread through blood and lymphatics there is no other we can say method lymph and blood okay and hodgkin lymphoma is a disorder of lymphoid tissue lymphoid tissue which is present in yes please it is present in lymph nodes spleen spleen thymus gland thymus gland tonsils tonsils right thymus gland spleen lymph node and this show we can say differentiated clear differentiated undifferentiated hodgkin lymphoma when we talk about the prevalence it makes up to 12 percent of the uh, lymphoma cases or the hodgkin cancer type cases all right so we are making very good use of our whiteboard space and my target is to make every point clear in your mind that what is this these things are so now the term comes lymphoma and the leukemia right so what is lymphoma can anybody explain in the comment section lymphoma lymphoma are solid mass of tumor solid mass of tumor which are play present at one place for example they can be present in lymph nodes they can be present in the spleen spleenomegaly can be there right and leukemia what is leukemia leukemia is we can say uh, we can say excessive proliferation or malignancy of hematopoietic cells hematopoietic cells hematopoietic cells show excessive proliferation and the main feature is that they spill into the circulation they spill into the circulation but our lymphomas are uh, hodgkin lymphoma are present only in the lymphoid tissue lymph node spleen thymus gland clear about this clear about this anybody having any doubt till now he or she can ask in the comment section i love to answer the queries asked by my students 
and then is the sign and symptoms let's discuss about sign and symptoms first one is painless enlargement of lymph nodes painless enlargement of lymph nodes clavicular supraclavicular lymph nodes in the breast near the ribs can be there and uh, then is the splenomegaly obvious when the cells are proliferating in the limited space it can cause increased size of spleen known as splenomegaly fever chills weight loss pruritus and supra uh, we can say sorry superior vena cava syndrome superior vena cava syndrome so as we know that the superior vena cava superior vena cava as we know that the blood and the lymph from above the neck area neck region neck region uh, comes down to jugular vein which finally emerges into uh, superior vena cava so when these uh, we can say lymph vessels or blood vessels bring or take this uh, we can say uh, cancer cells over here in the walls of the superior vena cava it can show malignancy and cause obstruction of the blood flow towards the right atrium of the heart right atrium of the heart so jugular vein distension can occur jugular vein distension can occur and it is treated by placing stent so supra, uh, superior vena cava uh, we can say uh, syndrome can occur which is a very dangerous condition if not treated the death can occur within six month period all right so now our lecture is moving towards our that is pathophysiology for example let's assume that there are 100 cases of hodgkin lymphoma present in front of you and you are asked about a single test just to we can say differentiate just to identify hodgkin's lymphoma by checking the slide so first is presence of reed sternberg cells this is a slide of lymphoma cells these are wbc t cell b cell and there is present very giant cell very giant cell the main feature of this giant cell is presence of these kind of structures yes this cell is known as owl yes owl eyed owl eyed cell because it is having two giant nucleus with dense chromatin dense chromatin is there all right so first clear cut significance clear cut indicator are reed sternberg cells and this uh, we can also know now till now that it is spreading through lymph channels and blood flow incidence is bimodal incidence is bimodal that is it is affecting age group of 20 to 30 years and above 50 years so this is bimodal incidence all right till now reed sternberg cells are very important from usmle point of view and clex rn point of view and bsc nursing msc nursing gnm nursing point of view all things are important in a student life you cannot ask that this is not important for your syllabus this is not under your nursing semester system this is not present in india it is present in america australia new zealand so this is not present on youtube etc so best video lectures also tell you these kind of things that everything is important so coming to the back to the diagnosis first is cbc i had already told that it is just done to check the normal wbc count 4002 that is 11000 millimeter per cube okay biopsy biopsy is done both in seasonal and seasonal under the incisional just a tissue part of the lymph node is taken and in the seasonal complete lymph node is removed to study point of view and to prevent metastasis bone marrow aspiration x-ray and mri are done to check the metastasis and its occurrence in different parts of the body then radioactive gallium 67 gallium 67 is done to check the metastasis in the deep tissues of the uh, deep tissues of the body that whether these are affected or not 
All right. So till now I had discussed so many things regarding the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, Dr. Hodgkin, very clever person, named these cells after him so that students can get, we can say, uh, 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 confused in the future till sun and moon are present forever and ever and ever okay so coming to the management uh, students first is radiation therapy obvious it can be teletherapy in which uh, the laser beam is focused and brachytherapy placement of radioactive uh, treatment substance near the cavity or near the uh, lymph node chemotherapy coming to the chemotherapy then you should must remember this word mop mop wiper not wiper just mop mop so under the mop as you can see over here that there is a red color in uh, red color uh, we i had used to write nitrogen mustard so m for nitrogen mustard drug is used nitrogen mustard drug is used then for o it is oncovin which is vincristin oncovin which is vincristin and prednisone so mustard oncovin and prednisone are drug of choice for the treatment of lymph uh, hodgkin lymphoma doxy doxorubicin doxorubicin are also used then comes the complications complications include fatigue skin arrhythmia i had told you pruritus over there diarrhea uh, esophagitis inflammation of the esophagus same condition lymph nodes present near the esophagus can show uh, inflammation of the esophagus so intake or swallowing digesting the food can be a problem all right so mucositis inflammation of the mucous membrane or we can say buccal cavity or membrane inflammation xerostomia this condition requires very good and uh, extreme nursing care point to be remembered okay xerostomia dry mouth then cystitis as lymph nodes are present near the urinary bladder so uh, lymph nodes can show uh, can cause inflammation of the urinary bladder under the top uh, that is cystitis so till now we had discussed so many things regarding the hodgkin lymphoma now we will focus on nursing management with the ncp of the hodgkin's lymphoma right so now we will talk about nursing responsibilities with nursing diagnosis regarding hodgkin's lymphoma after the complete brief discussion of their sign and symptoms and complication we had now came to know that it can lead to impaired tissue integrity due to high dose of radiation high dose of radiation can cause impaired tissue integrity in the supraclavicular region and in the neck region uh, lymph nodes are present uh, uh, and also in the other parts of the body so we will uh, educate the patient to avoid rubbing powders deodorants lotion and the sunscreen lotions because it can erase markings regarding the uh, we can say dose area regarding the radiation area brachytherapy or teletherapy area so uh, always keep the area clean and dry uh, the area on which the radiation th uh, therapy was given should be kept uh, clean and dry to prevent any skin irritation skin inflammation etc loose fitting clothes should be used by the patient because uh, tight fitting will also cause discomfort while sleeping and can erase the marking then educate the patient to protect the skin from the temperature extreme and the sunlight because it can cause photophobia and hyperpigmentation okay then comes the impaired oral mucous membrane suppose the radiation are being given in the neck region supraclavicular clavicular area lymph nodes it can lead to muco mucositis inflammation of the mucous membrane of the buccal cavity or buccal cavity right so we will uh, that is radiation therapy we will educate the patient about bland diet bland diet mixed diet it will also provide calories to prevent fatigue and frequent meals will provide fluid that will prevent xerostomia or dry mouth avoid smoking next point 
tobacco use and spices because spices contain lot of sodium it will further we can say increase the chances of xerostomia cause the mucus irritation and smoking and tobacco are also carcinogens okay coming third point oral care twice a day soft toothbrush should be used while maintaining dental hygiene and oral hygiene because uh, one of the we can say complication of hodgkin lymphoma can be thrombocytopenia that can further cause the low platelet count and if the patient is uh, brushing it can cause bleeding problems check for diarrhea provide oral rehydration therapy or provide liquid diet to prevent any fluid loss from the body medicine uh, educate the patient to take the medicine as prescribed and avoid over the counter over the counter medicine over the counter medicines and in the last if this hodgkin lymphoma can uh, spread it, uh, in the testes in the lymph nodes in the testes it can cause sterility so we will educate the male patient about sperm banking so that he uh, uh, he can enjoy a better parenthood and chances of parenthood increase so this was all about the nursing diagnosis with nursing responsibility of the hodgkin's lymphoma today i had explained in brief but complete information about hodgkin's lymphoma i hope this video might had proved useful for you of uh, all whether they are medical nursing and pharmacology students so kindly subscribe kindly share this video with all your juniors seniors as much as you can kindly help us to spread the awareness regarding free nursing education free medical education for nclex rn and obvious 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 medical fraternity once again thank you very much